with countries uh, is such an exhilarating moment when I get the opportunity to uh, you know moderate the show and to host the show this morning promises to be very insightful very educative very informative and I'm happy and confident that we'll be able to exact what you uh, need from us in relation to explaining and understanding uh, explaining to you what the uh, uh, situations uh, are in respect of our governance process in Ghana. Uh, this morning, there are a number of issues that we're going to be touching on. Um, but it is important that even before we do that, that we share with the viewers uh, something which is very significant and, and, and poignant you know, to the uh, political discussions that are ongoing in Ghana. And it's all in relation, in relation to Dr. Baumier's lecture. I don't know whether it was a lecture, whether it was a symposium, whether, uh, you know, but he claims that he was opening a next chapter, um, you know, for uh, the governance of, of this nation and that he was, you know, sharing with us his visions and ideas and how he thinks um, he can run the country when given the opportunity or if given the opportunity to run uh, the country. Now, a number of issues came out as a result of that, and indeed the opposition political parties, um, you know, sort of disagreed with the vice president on a number of, of things. And uh, uh, one of them is the fact that the, pres the vice president sought to absolve himself of all the negatives which have characterized the administration of Nanadana Kwekufuado and taking credit for all the positives which have happened in this administration. Now, fast forward, people, you know, especially some media people, decided to create their own definitions or to create their own understanding of what the disagreements um, are, you know, to the extent that people have actually now decided that they will take the disagreement and coin a political term for it. And indeed, yesterday I was watching um, Paul Admotri, and he, you know, he's talking about collective responsibility, collective responsibility. And I said, ah, but collective responsibility, in what context are people using collective responsibility? And collective responsibility, the definition of it is not cast in stone, because when you look at collective responsibility as a, a, a practice, a political practice, or a, you know, a system of practice in British parliamentary political system, that definition will not fit into the narrative being expressed by the Ghanaian people. So if you are trying to pick and choose you know, what definition best works for you in countering the disagreements that people have to Baumier's presentation, then I think that you're being disingenuous and you're being unfair to the fact. Now, collective responsibility can be found even in law. Collective responsibility can be found in business. Collective responsibility can be found in politics. So the political definition of collective responsibility, it's different from the legal definition of collective responsibility. Of course, if the vice president plays a certain significant role in the administration of this country and people find that the political system that they run or the administration, this particular administration has failed in that regard. And people are raising significant concerns or relevant concerns, right? You deciding to define that critique or that criticism as a collective responsibility is what I find troubling. That you define it in, the, in, in relation to the British parliamentary system of governance is problematic. So I think we should be very charitable. Now, it is important that for us to be able to have an open discussion, devoid of any senti sentiment or emotions, it is important that we go back and understand the duties of the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. So first of all, let's define the duties and responsibilities of the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. My research team are also putting together the functions of the economic management team. This one, we are not going to do any hearsay, any propaganda, you know, any unfounded allegations. We are going to base our analysis of the issues on facts and on law, okay? Now, duties of the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana. 
So the vice president presides over various meetings in absence of the president. The vice president presides over various meetings in, in, the, in absence of the president. I think, Greg, if you can share this slide with the, with the technical team so they can project it on the screens so viewers can follow. Now, two, he acts on behalf of the president when the president is out of the country. That's Article 60. Eight, the vice president shall be a member of cabinet, Article 76. The vice president shall preside over cabinet meetings in the absence of the president. Salary and emoluments of the vice president. Salary, the vice president earns 39,397. Retirement package is 549,492. The vice president is a, is, is a member of the following committees. The National Security Council, the Armed Forces Council, the Police Service Council, the Prisons Service Council, and is the chair of the economic management team, the economic management team. I am getting the functions of the economic management team in order that it may guide our discussions going forward. So this is, or these are the functions of the vice president of the Republic of Ghana. And I have also shared with you his salary and emoluments. And of, of course, there are several other benefits that come with being the vice president of the Republic of Ghana, which benefits are funded by the taxes of the Ghanaian people. Now, if I hear this argument of the driver's mate and people saying that the driver's mate does not play an important role in the, the journey, I find it quite troubling. Okay, so if we don't want to talk about a driver's mate, then we may, we may we, perhaps we should start talking about using an OA bus. Because I know an OA bus, you know, the, the, the OA buses don't have, uh, they don't have uh, mates. But if you're talking, if you're using the, the driver's mate, that, that means the trotro analogy. Then it's important to understand the role that the mate plays in that journey, right? So he picks, the mate picks the, the passengers. The driver is driving the car. So they have a destination in mind. So if they are going to Kaswa, they know that they are going to Kaswa. But before they get to Kaswa, there are different stops. There are different junctions. There are different places that people may get off at. So they get to Malam Junction. Someone will get down. Someone will join the bus. They get to Wager. Someone will get down. Someone will join the bus. So that's how it operates. Now, who determines where to stop to pick a passenger? It is the mate who determines where to stop to pick a passenger, even though the one behind the steering wheel is the driver, undoubtedly. Now, who also takes the money from the passengers? The person who takes the monies from the passengers is the mate. So the mate is the one who will tell the passengers that we are at wager. Now, your fee is one Ghana CD. Your fee is 50 pesos. Your fee is 20 pesos. So the driver drives the car, but the mate is the one who coordinates and ensures that all the passengers who are in the bus pay their lorry fares. So that is an important function of the mate. Now, assuming that they get to Kaswa and the mate is unable okay, to provide the monies or the monies that the mate collected, he is not able to give it to the driver. It means that the mate has failed to perform his duties in that journey. So the mate cannot at all. If, for instance, they go and then the driver knows that you are supposed to get 100 Ghana cities by the time we get to Kaswa, and they get to Kaswa, and the money is not up to 100 Ghana cities. Maybe the mate took only 20 Ghana cities. The driver questions the mate that why is it that we are supposed to get 100 Ghana cities, but I only have 20 Ghana cities. You are only accounting for 20 Ghana cities. It means that the mate has failed to do his job. So that is it. So if I hear people say that, oh, he's not the driver. And sometimes when the driver goes to maybe buy food or drink water, and then the car is in the middle of the road, the mates are the ones who move the car and pack, you know, they are able to pack it well. So the mate plays an important role. So we will discuss all these matters here. I just wanted for us to understand the functions of the vice president. And I also sort of want us to understand and appreciate that a mate plays an important role in the journey. And in fact, 
Yes, the driver's role is to make sure people are safe, but the mate's role is to ensure that the finances in that journey are protected and are up to uh, the amount of money that is expected to be made. So let me just share the, the, the topics with you. My viewers are here. I'm talking too much, but I, I didn't think they were here. They would be here soon. So that I had planned this already. Palestinians in northern Gaza on verge of famine, Daily Guide. You are part of the mess, Alan tells Baumia, over attempts to party uh, to blame, uh, you know, uh, attempts by party to blame um, over economic crisis. I don't know. This one was not captured well. If you can resend it to me. Akufuado to deliver sooner February 17th, Gan uh, uh, February 27th. That's a Ghanaian Observer um, newspaper uh, this morning. But I'm going to see Good morning to you, comrade. Morning. I trust you are well. And Honorable Lady of Senate is also here. Good, uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, Kwan here. And, Come greet, and greetings from uh, Tamale and uh, the incoming president's current. Uh, I'm here. We're in Ghana. Oh, uh, we, 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 we want President Mahama to come after he has come. I'm here. Then you will come and join. So beg, uh, I beg yeah. you to join us. To let President Mahama yeah, come and finish talking about incoming president when I'm here. Uh, that's why I'm saying that for the time being, the consensus is that we should let President Mahama come and finish the job. There's and not bring some hope. Kwame is going to drink. bring some hope and <laughs> wipe away the tears, the unending tears of Ghanaians today from the excruciating hardship the MPP had. I mean, I mean mm. it was a fantastic tour of the northern region. Right. And the euphoria and the rousing welcome. I saw your pictures. Yeah, given to President Mama. Yeah, Are you the campaign coordinator in the northern region? I think they should give you the position. Kwame. I think, I think, these I think are, you... These you are matters, uh, uh, oh, why? Uh, so I can't think again? No, I didn't say, oh, Kwame, can I guard you? Ah, I so I'm, I said I think. Oh, Kwame, 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 I said I think. But Kwame, I did I Must you tell me what you say? Kwame, did I slap you? Can't I say what I want to say? I didn't slap you. I say I think Honorable Lady Kwame, Kwame, should Kwame. be should lead. Thank the, you very the, much for the. Uh, I the said message. I think. I, I, even the NDC gives me the porter in the porter's lodge job. I will work. <laughs> yeah. I'm working for the party, and yeah. for me, it's a party first. Yeah. And so whatever we shall all do to ensure <laughs> that President Mahama comes to power and we have a parliamentary majority across the left and breadth of the country. Mm -hmm. to ensure that the government reforms the economy and uh, uh, brings, brings life back to the good people of this country who have suffered for far too long. Mm -hmm. but I mean, it's not for nothing that I say that when we finally kick out this hopelessly uninspiring government of Nana Kufado, Dr. Bawunya, it will be like second independence. There will be carnival on the I streets. I think we'll come to that conversation. So, uh, so we can expand on that. I, I, I'll be following the town hall yeah, meeting. Yeah. I, I think it's quite resonating. And so people are people actually appreciate the people, fact that people can wait for the December former president John Domani Mahama and the flag bearer of the NDC is actually allowing the people to tell him yes what they want. That I, I think that's is. that's quite brilliant. Not imposing yes don't, his it, it, that the paternalistic approach to politics yeah. where you think as a father you should do whatever you want for your yeah. children without yeah. even listening to them. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, mm. Kwame, deciphering the true problems is half the solution. Mm. So you listen to the people themselves, and then when you when you when you when you are in, when you, when the people hand you the mandate, you go straight mm. and allocate resources and make sure that the resources go to them and mm. uh, the work is done. So that's what President Mama is doing. Wonderful job, and the response is tremendous. Mm. Uh, yeah. When it comes to this one, I'm sure, uh, Dr. Bao Yasin, you will see that ever since he was elected flat bearer, he has been flat. Mm. Nothing. This was just an agenda to hear him because he's lost him. And people were not talking about him again. He's forgotten the credibility is in Tates. So a lot of this is, I'm sure we'll get there. All right. Corey, you're contesting. Yes. To become the flag bearer of PNC. And then the president of Ghana. And the president of Ghana. Sure. Right. When did you, when did you declare this intention? Or is, is, is it fresh? Oh, no. It means you've not been following your own programs. This was declared on Precipras uh, uh, talk. Talk time. Talk time. When uh, Bliss hosted mm. the event on behalf of Kwesi Pratt, and the question was asked, and I made it clear that when the party opens nominations, I will pick the nominations, and I will run for the office. Since then, I've been doing some tours, meeting and engaging with regional executives. And I have already done some tours in the Ashanti Eastern. I've been to the um, Bono region, 
Bono East and Ahafo regions. And I just returned the day before yesterday from the Bono region to take a little respite and to go back to continue the work. And so my next trip will be to head towards the northern regions and then to do the northeast, do upper east, and then do Savannah and do my home region, the upper west region. So, yeah. so in the same vein, I'm, I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm, campaign, I'm actually the campaign manager for Audi Shark. I have I the, general I think, manager, the, the general general secretary. secretary. I think that he's a fantastic so young a brilliant man. Brilliant guy. Yeah. He's a fantastic yes. young man. Yes. Yes. Just that he's also coming against some other formidable persons, all of whom are my coat, my boys. And then I will have to sit down with them because I don't think that people presumed to me should be seen contesting against each other. There are many positions within the party, mm -hmm. but there's no doubt that I would do it's a fantastic but, young but, man. But then I, and, I have, and I have groomed him. Yes. I know his metal. I understand him. Um, at one point in time, you could say that he was my chief of staff. And so, but he's always been your chief of staff. And so you, 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 it, is, it is something that is close to my heart. If, if you don't support Audi Shaggy, me myself, I campaign against you. Well, it is. Uh, 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 how the shark? Uh, 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 it's not. Ah, it's not Yeah, it's not negotiable. Just as it is not negotiable for me to campaign for you, it is not negotiable. I have never said that. <laughs> if after listing the credentials of the man and the person I have trained, if he's not competent to handle the job, then it means it. that yeah. me myself, you have failed. I have failed yeah, in my true. executions, yeah. and I don't think that he has ever denied the fact that no, I have mentored him, yeah, I yeah, have guided that. him. And so mm -hmm. there are many things probably he still needs to learn. But mm -hmm. I think that he's coming up we'll just, as, just as the other people are. Yeah. But congratulations in advance. I know that definitely as for the PNC, <laughs> it's in your pocket. Um, 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 it is not the case of Nantechi and Akufado. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> it has never been in my pocket. Hey. Um, I just think that our delegates now, yeah. our delegates now are, are more willing than before. As I keep saying, they've tasted water and they've tasted alcohol. Mm. And they realize that water is far superior to alcohol mm. in every ramifications. And so the current hiatus within our political party is testimony of the role that I have played over the years to ensure that we have been able to knit together. Hey, without blowing word and without saying anything, Alaji ADF Hussein has been one of the persons that when things were not working well within our political party, even external as he is, mm -hmm. he was called upon to come and talk between myself and Edward Mama to bring some sanity and some level, just to let you know. I mean, he probably he didn't want this thing to be disclosed, but to let you know that when things are going bad, mm -hmm. you can resort to people who are respected by others to resolve matters within your I wonder why he's not in the U.S. He was in Rwanda. He was also no, no, he, matters in Rwanda. He came. <laughs> came <laughs> this man. He came. I mean, it was a tense <laughs> moment in 2008. And the role he played between myself, Edwin Mama, and Alaji Ramadan, <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable, yeah. you know. And so we are able to identify people from outside, mm. from within, to be able to resolve issues. Today, it appears that the party does not have what it takes to resolve our own matters. And then here we are with such a monumental confusion leading to um, a case where it appears that we are headed in no direction. But I'm, I'm certain that with the call that has been made upon me by our party, I will lead the party, will restore the dignity of the party, and will win election 2024. Very well. Well, thank you very much. Honorable. Uh, maybe you have to say something nice about uh, Audi Shark. Because me, I'm campaigning for Audi oh, Shark. I, I think, like I just told you, let me just tell you that Fully. Audi Shark, his candidature and his victory by the grace of Allah is not negotiable. This is a very brilliant, steadfast, dedicated, visionary young man. When you talk to Audi Shark for five minutes, you will see demonstrably his understanding of the political system and situation yeah. so by, by no the, i don't i don't know that's why i was asking uh, Comrade benamona who are the other candidates oh i you know because i thought that if, after i mentioning okay since you are insisting we have faruddin mm -hmm. uh, yakubu who is currently a deputy general secretary we have Sulemana sedu 
who is the Ashanti Regional Secretary of the party. Since you want me, these are the people who have notified yeah, but, me but of their intentions. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, I don't, I don't, I don't, that's I don't, I don't know. I, I, I sincerely Democratic didn't want to mention yeah, As a Democratic Party, mm. I'm sure that everybody has an yeah. unfettered right to. Uh, but of course, like I said, all this. three are my boys, and I need to talk to them. I have so indicated I'm that. I'm sure that if you look at, uh, without any uh, attempt to undermine somebody's integrity or listen, uh, I want to believe that Audi Shark stands heads above. Yeah. Uh, uh, Saga. Good morning. Sorry. Good morning. But Bernard Mona, let me, let me congratulate you. I'm sure yeah, that yeah. he has paid his dues well, well yeah, over yeah. in the PNC. And qualifies amply to, to, to represent the party at any level. And so, if at this point in time he chooses to go for the flower bearership of the party, there can't be any doubt in any uh, 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 body's mind, especially within the PSC, that he's the man to look for. Mm. Uh, and so, I would wish him well and wish him the best mm. by the grace of Allah to. Realize his ambition of becoming the flag bearer of the PNC. My only uh, po point of departure is when we come to the ultimate contest. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that uh, that I will win. I hope that he will, he will do very well, but he will lend his support. No, I will win. <laughs> to His Excellency President John Trump. No, 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 I will win. And, uh, you see, Alaji, you, when know, President you know this well <laughs> that when the stone is falling from above. Okay. You don't go and hold your neighbor's head. Uh, you hold your, you head, hold yes. your head. Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Because so, you have to protect your squamming. Yeah. Alive. Mm -hmm. If a stone is yes, falling I from know. above and you hear that the stone is falling out from above, you I come and hold his head to protect his head from crashing. See, uh, President Bahama is a household word. This is a presidential phone. Uh, you were you were you talking to me. Uh, uh, I, I, hey. I, I, oh. I am I am I am this Huawei. Huawei? Mm -hmm. This is Huawei. But you know I'm a Huawei man. Yes. Hey, Saka, this is what we do. No, you know I'm that not, I, mean, I don't have to campaign for them. Later, we'll, we'll talk about no, that. No, you know me, I've been a Huawei man. No, no, this one, this one, that's it too. Because, you see, I'm going to do your campaign strategy. <laughs> so, I need something like this Let to work on your strategy. Uh, so, come here. I, 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 I will wish well, you well. We will get to Oh, wait, wait. Uh, are you the one who's the show? Ah, if you like, if you, you ask me a question, I was going to ask you a question. You didn't ask me a question. What question did he ask you? What question did he ask you? Oh, how is it? And I was answering you. See, the, the man is forcing a question. I the man is forcing a question. Kwame, Kwame doesn't remember, or oh, you remember. The man who asked me. That's the legal answer. 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 That's You know him, right? Who? Audi Shark. Oh, my bad. That's his uh. brother. Oh, brother. Uh, then the matter. Well, last, last week. Okay, not the last two weeks. Then the matter is settled. I also met your friend yesterday. Which the one, one you, you've, been, you've been talking to me about. Which one? Oh. Uh, we talk about so many friends. Oh, uh, 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 what's his name? Henry Corte. Oh. I met you yesterday. I mentioned you. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. me and Saka will strangle Pao. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We hey. strangle which one? They took Saka's position and gave it to him. Oh, no, no, no. He's a man. He's a man. Uh, He's a man. Saka was the high paradise. He said the man was a poor man. Uh, uh, was a poor man. <laughs> so you, 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 man. you and me used to work with ICP. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a good guy. Yeah. The, good guy. The I will always work for him. Mm, dispersing justice in a society, of, in a society hmm? in flux. Walking a legal tie through. This is this is uh, uh, a book written by His Lordship Justice Christine Krumer Diamose, and we'll be launching this book on the 26th of February 2024. Please let me let me let me let me do this. Dispensing justice in a society influx. Walking a legal tie through. So this is a book written by His Lordship Justice Christine Krumer. A dream of say, and uh, we'll be launching this book on the 26th of February 2024. Um, I'll share the details with you soon, 
But listen, I have read this book, and it gives you a historical understanding of our judicial system, and even uh, you know the expeditious trial trials and the problems that we had um, in in relation to you know expeditiously dealing with matters in court and how there were reforms and how you know we've been able to at least achieve some of the things which were suggested or recommended in the reforms and things like that. Now this is a must read book. I won't lie to you for all law students, all law students, because it gives you a better understanding of especially those doing constitutional law and legal systems. You an interpretation, you actually need this book. It's a very, very good book. Now, yes, even though we've not officially launched it, but we have few copies that we are selling. So I want to, no, there, there's a number that you need to call, and then you can, I don't know the price. I don't know. But the launch is uh, on the 22nd, I beg your pardon, I said 22nd, 22nd February 2024. Law Court Complex Auditorium. So, you know, the one that was built by Professor Atamios. The Law Court, com uh, court Complex. Uh, auditorium. The time is 2 p.m. The time is 2 p.m. So if you want to uh, be there, call 0243 I repeat, 0243 and I've read, I've read it, I've read it. I mean, you, 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 it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. So even if you look at the table of content, so they have the table of cases, they have the table of content. Chapter 1 talks about the docket, chapter 2 talks about justice, chapter 3 talks about society, chapter 4 looks at the nation Ghana, chapter 5 talks about Ghana, a society influx, chapter 6 talks about the law, chapter 7 talks about the laws of Ghana, English law and justice system on the Gold Coast. Chapter 8 talks about the laws of Ghana, development of the laws of Ghana as declared by Article 11 of the Constitution. Then the Part 2, walking the tightrope. Chapter 9 walk, talks about ascertaining the law. Chapter uh, 10 talks about walking across substantive law. Chapter 11 talks about walking across procedural law. So even for those who do civil law, who are doing civil law and criminal law, you need this. You need this. You really need this in your life. You see, guarding against the impediment to justice, contempt of court, talked about injunctions, working across procedural law, service of processes. So even civil procedure is here. Yeah, lawyers, even lawyers, we need it. We need it. We need it. Modern regime of procedural. Look, so this book, I'm telling you, is for everybody. Every, everybody. Look, everybody. And there are cases, table of cases as well. So Kaka, you can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are table of cases. Good, good. So, you know, Abaduve, Awache, Abebrese, the, and Ka, and others. The, the, so, the please, writer. Mm, just Can you just read something about that? Oh, yes, 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 so yes, yes. Know. So, let, let me just read uh, the author. The author is a retired justice of the Court of Appeal of Ghana. He was called to the bar in, uh, in Ghana on 20th November 1980. Wow. And was appointed a justice of appeal on 26th March 2008 after 28 years private legal practice he retired on 26 december 2018 and this book is about dispensing or delivering justice justice is delivered by the application of law for the resolution of disputes that arise out of relationship i remember when i was doing evidence this one you can't forget <laughs> you, can't, you have to memorize it. this one this particular quote you know justice is not a static concept you know so it's it's, it's beautiful i mean i've read it i've not finished reading it but I've read a few chapters, and I want to encourage all lawyers, all lawyers, and uh, all law students to get a copy of this, uh, and it will help you, you know. So the number again is 0243-689-906, especially those writing the entrance exams and things like that. Let's come back here and uh, look at the other the issues that I, uh, we've tabled for our conversation this morning. And... Um, uh, the, oh, where is Greg? Uh, okay. So, okay. So, Palestinians in northern Gaza on verge of famine. Uh, you are part of the mess, Alan tells Baumia. A coup for to deliver Sona on February 27th. Uh, these are the sto topics that we've chosen for our conversation. Honorable ABFC, let me start with you on the Gaza issue. 
think yes, that uh, we have dealt with this issue uh, a number of times. And it seems the tragic nature of this matter uh, still even cannot be lost on anyone. Uh, even when I was coming this morning, I saw pictures of women and children, some of them be dead, being carried as a result of heavy bombing in Rafa and other places, including refugee camps, Kwame, including Shifa Hospital, where they had positions, uh, 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 the, the, the uh, uh, Israeli regime had positioned snipers, Kwame, to be shooting people at a hospital. Hospital, and they reported that some doctors who have braved this situation to continue to offer uh, sacrifice their lives to offer services to the people have, have been shot dead. A number of doctors that have been killed. I mean, this part, what is now happening is clearly a, a massacre, it's a genocide, it's very clear because I don't see how anybody would even go to hospitals Kwame, to be shooting people at the hospital. Anybody within the sanctuary of a hospital will be seeking medical care. You may have battlefields and others in other places, but in hospitals, in refugee camps, God of mercy, what is happening? That's why many people think the world has lost its conscience. And, and the inability of a number of Western nations to speak is a debt on their human rights record because after this atrocious acts and acts of genocide that are going on, do you have the, 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 the moral courage? To go and criticize Russia, that Russia is doing what in Ukraine. Can you open your mouth and say that when you go to U.S. Security Council and support these atrocious acts that are being committed by the Zionist regime? Why would you do that? Kwame, it doesn't make sense. And so I, I, I think that the current attempt to get the ceasefire and, you know, uh, 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 find some way of going around this horrible carnage that we are having in Gaza, uh, it's a way forward, but Kwame, we don't need ceasefires that are only for a week, for two weeks, and then you come back and the, the, the killing of civilians even assumes more greater agency, dimension. We need an end to this uh, uh, criminal war. It's a war that has uh, violated many international lo uh, 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 laws and conventions uh, 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 of the United Nations. And I think that so long as it continues to go on without the, the, the active uh, uh, attempts by the West, principally the United States, uh, France, and Britain, mm. to, 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 to bring the regime to order, uh, it's, 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 it's an indictment on all, all, all the uh, things that the United Nations has stood for. Kwame, as we speak, uh, the, the trust deeper into uh, the enclaves of uh, population, because you know when they when they fighting uh, displace a lot of about 1.5 million people from the north, they all run to Rafa and others where there are huge concentrations of people. People think that about 1.7, 1.8 million people are now crammed into this small place, and now bombing has also resumed in that area. So where do the people go? That's why many people say that there's no safe place in in Gaza. Everywhere is a theater of war and, and conflict and, 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 and to fathom innocent women and children. The last statistics that was released, Kwame, more than two thirds of the uh, 23,000 casualties are women and children. The real men who are supposed to be on the battlefield that they should look for. You are not even here, you are hearing even of encounters between uh, uh, Hamas fighters and, 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 and the Israeli soldiers. That is where the fight, if there was any fighting, that should, that's where it should be, but not with the, with, the, with the ordinary civilians who are there. And so, Kwame, I will just end on this note. You know, the, the, the International Court of Justice mm. was supposed to take, make some interim ruling, which I think they did the last week, to call on Israel to put a stop to the war that they are, they are uh, perpetrating against the Palestinians because they could run the risk of perpetrating acts of genocide. True. So I know that the main thrust of the South African uh, uh, petition before the court 
was for them to determine that genocide has been committed in, pa in Palestine and particularly in Gaza. And so the International Court of Justice, people are awaiting the ruling of the International Court of Justice, even though many say that, look, it is a formality because the, the, the implementation will have to be done by the Security Council, which, of course, you know, the backers of uh, Israel, principal the United States, may not allow UN Security Council resolution to be passed to, to, to seek that enforcement. But it is important that that signal is sent, if even for nothing but for the record. Because when it was clear that genocide was committed against Jews by the uh, 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 Nazi regime uh, 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 in the, in the, in the run-up to the Second World War, I mean, it has had some lasting <laughs> impact on Germany today. Today, when they are talking about Jews, the Germans are, they are, they are among the first to try and rise to the occasion that they are supporting Israel, so that it doesn't create the impression that they have that thing at the back of their mind. Uh -huh. So it is important, if not for anything, the symbolic thing that they are committing, the Israeli regime is committing genocide in Palestine, would, would go not only to indict them, but to put pressure on their backers to take a second look, put pressure on the United States to, to, to take away completely the, 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 the armaments. Kwame, most of the 200,000, uh, uh, 220 ton, I don't know what they call it, 20 ton or 200 ton bombs. Can you imagine dropping a, a, even a small bomb in the area? We are talking about 20 ton bombs in civilian areas. So these are things I think the, the, the backers of Israel must back off and cut off their arms and other financial support and push them to, to go for a long-term uh, ceasefire. That will end this uh, criminal war and allow uh, uh, international legality to reign. So, Kwame, so far, I'm, I'm sure that this is what uh, I can say for now. All right. Comrade. <coughs> There's little more to say about the unconscionable world that we find ourselves in that people would deliberately go and attempt to completely wipe out a certain group of people and the world is watching as if no one cares. Time without number, I have insisted that the Africans particularly that are ignorantly following or supporting Israel must be told that they are betraying our independence. <coughs> Any African that has suffered colonialism, has suffered the ravages of slavery, has suffered apartheid, has suffered assimilation of one form or the other, and the indirect rule of the British in our continent will appreciate what it means for some people who are landless to come and become occupiers, take your land, and then use, usurp everything that belongs to you. The people of Palestine will have the full support of the people of Africa because what they are going through, we have been through. And we expect Africans, and that is why I clap and salute the South African government for its forthrightness in saying that, look, what you are going through, it is the Palestinian land that you are taking away. Let us fight for Palestinian rights. The likes of President Akufado and William Ruto will go down as some of the people who have betrayed the African cause and our African struggle for independence. That said, I also think that it's unimaginable that the world, you know, I just, I just, I just can't imagine, Kwame, you killing people, right? Mm -hmm. Then at a certain point, you say that the people have run out of fuel. They have run out of water. They have run out of food. Consequently, you say that let's pause so that we can allow for fuel. We can allow for food. We can allow for water. After they have taken food and water, then you go back and you start killing them. This is madness at its apex. The UN and others who will negotiate that let's have a temporary truce so that, what do we call it, aid 
can get to the people and after that you resume hostilities for the people to be bombarded and to be killed just allow them to be killed just allow them to be killed if you cannot stop the war perpetually because this madness coming from Israel should not be countenanced. It is sickening that the, 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 the free world will allow such to perpetuate and Israel is going on. And you know, the ICC and what it's doing, it appears to us that it is only Africans and uh, Latin American countries that any time there is an issue, they will come after us with the heavy-handedness. But when it involves Israel and other people, then you see that they don't do anything of that nature. Clearly, this is an attempt to wipe out the people of Palestine, but as the Palestinians themselves continue to say, it is their land or their lives. That whether it is from the sea, from the land, or from the air, Palestine shall be free. I think that it is time for the ICC to take bold step and to ensure that we are able to get that Israel is committing genocide and we will try them in the manner that they have. Free Palestine. Viva mm -hmm. Palestine. Saga. Yeah. Yes, sir. Kwame, thank quick you one, very quick much. One, quick one. Let me let me let me let me now take this opportunity to greet my people. First of all, I I take this opportunity to say good morning to the president, Nana de Donko Akufuado. And I also say good morning and salam alaikum to Alaji nice. uh, Mahmoud Baumia, the flag bearer and leader of the MPP. That's right. And let me also say good morning and salam alaikum to the chief imam and all Muslims on this Friday, as well as my co panelists and your good self. Kwame. Yes, sir. You see, when it comes to this uh, Israelis Palestinian problem, I think that the world has not been angry enough. I don't know whether, uh, for reasons known to a lot of people, whether because the United States of America is involved. You know, like I've always said, time and again that I'm a fan of the United States but it's, it's as if it's, it's as if uh, it's about time that we call a spade a spade the United States have outlived its usefulness they simply have become a body that perpetrates injustice and for me, I think that they have to be called out a name for who they are. They always say that they have permanent interests and not permanent friends. But I think that if you perpetrate injustice against defenseless people, because this war is just a proxy war, I just cannot understand why we have international law. There's a group of people the, the Palestine, backed by hey, the, the Israelis, backed by the United States, who are throwing all the rules of international law to the dogs and are perpetrating on head of hardship or untold hardship and genocide. What they are doing is more than genocide. Is, is, is crime against humanity. And if it were some other leader or countries that were doing even half of what the Israelis were doing, you see the United States all over the place. I mean, for, for, for how long can or will the, 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 Palestine, the people of Palestine be subjugated, be tortured, now, they, they, it's, it's as if the end game is that they are aiming at a, a, a total alienation, the total extermination of the Palestinian people. It doesn't make sense. And we come and then we condemn and it doesn't go anywhere. 
those who will take action are not taking action. People are dying. Now, today, if maybe these Palestinians decide that, uh, because they, 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 have been, they have been killed every now and then, if one decide that, let me put bomb on myself and then go and die anyway, and also kill people, will anybody call them terrorists? So I think that now the world has come to understand that you cannot call somebody who is fighting for his right a terrorist. And especially when the people are being pushed to the war and there is no end in sight. In, in, this, in this whole madness, there seems not to be an end in sight. It's a never-ending circle of torture that has been vested on the, 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 the Palestinian people. And I think leaders of this world must wake up from their slumber. They, they, they seem not to be leaders at all. Everybody is either, you know, indulging the United States for their economic reasons. And, and look at the UK. UK, for instance. I mean, the, in, in history, they were one, they were one of the uh, 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 countries that actually sacked the Israelis from, from the UK. They sent them. And one will ask, why is it that anywhere Israel goes, the people want to see their back? Everywhere. I mean, they were sacked from Europe. In Spain, they were sacked. Everywhere they were sacked. Why is it so? And now the Palestinians embrace you because they were thinking you are, they are brothers. Then you came and now you are driving them. You are not just driving them away. You are killing. You want to finish them off and take their land. And then you have some leaders, leaders in the world who, who, who are just all over the place. You know. And, 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 and for me, I mean, this is where new breed of leadership would emerge. Because in, in crises like this, that's where, and I'm very proud of what is happening, what the South Africans are doing. It's like almost everybody is, 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 is asleep. And South Africa, going, knowing what they went through in apartheid, decided that no, it's not just enough to say that we condemn, we condemn. Action has to be taken. And they are taking action. And I just hope that the, the, the world will take action. And the United States is continually becoming irrelevant by the day. And, 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 and ebbing into itself, any enemies. I used to be a fan, and I'm no longer a fan, owing to this reason. And I think that uh, uh, applies to a, a whole lot of other people. Not just that. You know, Palestinians are also human beings. They have the right to, 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 to live in their own land. And they are not saying the Israelis should not live. Israel should not live. They are saying that, leave and let me live. We want to live side by side. The Palestinian state and the Israeli state. I mean, when Israel is, they, is, when they were giving Israel the land, I mean, there was just some small portion for them to, to settle when they were driven away from Europe and other places. And now they are saying that, oh, be, become a state, and let also become a state. In 1985, they were all man of our cause. And they said that by, 20, by 1988, the Palestinians should have been given their own uh, 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 states. The Israelis ensured that it never came to fruition. And that was the reason, one of the reasons why Yasser Arafat was, was killed. When it came to you know, borders and, and security, they ensured that <laughs> they moved the security from internal, from, you know, internal to the borders. And they did not ensure, they, they did not follow through the protocols. And today, the Palestinians have been treated like second-class uh, 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 human beings. And indeed, they even call them animals. You remember when this war started? The, the Israelis, uh, 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 what was the name? Was it the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, called them uh, 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 human animals. And and I think that to allow these people to uh, at, at this point, like you say. Now the problem is becoming hard-headed, is becoming uh, uh, so complex. It's not just the shooting alone. They are dying out of 
uh, 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 hunger and starvation. There's famine, like we are, we, we, in the, the newspapers. And there are a whole manner of things that is happening to the people of Palestine. And it is calculated by the Israelis. The resource or the end or the effect of this whole thing is to ensure that at the end of the day, the, the, the Palestinians themselves will run away from, 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 from Palestine. But I think that with Allah and God at the side of the Palestine of Palestine, the, 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 the ambition and this inordinate desire to see the total annihilation and uh, extermination of uh, uh, Palestine will never happen. Thank you very much, Sakasanya. You're still watching the news primary segment here on Pan African Television with me, Kwame Sudan. So let me still start with Saka on the next story. Dr. Bahubizi, his lecture, the aftermath of the lecture, what people have been saying, what do you have to say? Is he just a driver's mate? Or he is part of the failings of the driver. Saka. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Kwame. I'm coming. I want to you. First of all, Kwame, first of all, let's. Uh, first of all, Kwame. Okay, I, mean, I think that you should listen to me. You see, when, when I'm talking, you are somewhere. All, it, 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 it makes the whole thing... No, sorry. I you yeah, it makes the whole thing. It makes your thoughts not... No, no, no. I thought you were looking for a document. No, no, no. I mean, the first topic... Yes, please, proceed. You did the same. Second, you want proceed. to do the same. Proceed. It's not good. First of all, I... Let me, let me see that... Elijah Mahmoud Baumia. When it comes to the vice presidency position. Unless maybe somebody want to do the unthinkable by, by arguing with me on this matter. In terms of the vice presidential ticket or position, he has been the most impactful vice president. Most active, most impactful, most the, the, the vice president that has <coughs> achieved more than any other vice president in our fourth republic in terms of achievement. We've seen uh, Aka, we've seen Ali Mama, we've seen your Mama, we've seen uh, uh, Baumia. And if he can be impactful, the most impactful vice president in the history of the fourth republic, it presupposes, I mean, it goes without saying that he will definitely be the most impactful president in the fourth republic given the opportunity he outlined his vision two days ago and the vision he outlined was about himself as a person as a president he did not just go and start saying that oh uh, he is not a, 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 a team player. No. If you listen to them, because I, I will preempt certain things that I know Allah JBF Hussein and Benamona might want to, to say. Uh, are you in my head? Yeah, I'm in your head. Yeah, yeah, I'm in your, your head. I'll, I'll preempt all those things. <laughs> you see, if you li li listen very careful, the vice president, as the vice president of Ghana, deputize for his boss and therefore if you look at article 58 of 50, 50, 58 57 2 and all that the president is the the, the it take president over everybody the president is the final decision maker and as economic management team we all know i mean if you look at there is nowhere in the constitution that there is anything like economic management and that it should be the, 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 the preserve of the uh, uh, vice president. It is the president that decides that, OK, let me use my vice president to help you know, give advisory uh, 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 order 
within a certain framework, like economic management team and all those things. What the constitution talk about is about the cabinet and all that. So the vice president as the chairman of the economic management team is advisory. For instance, even uh, the, 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 the finance ministry position, we all know that the finance minister is in charge of the economy. But even that, that one, the finance minister does so on behalf of the president. And you remember when we wanted to go to HIPIC at, uh, at the IMF, the finance minister said that we were not going to IMF today. We won't go tomorrow. The next time, the president vetoed. He said, let's go to the IMF today. And it was announced. Because whatever that you see as vice president, you have your vision. Your president has your vision. You only uh, 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 come in handy to help the president achieve his vision. Today, Kwame, no matter you, this team, this team that you work with here in Pan-Africa TV, you work with them. There are certain things, maybe you are not the boss. Tomorrow, if you become the boss, there are certain things that you might, you might change. You might not necessarily have to go with whatever, whatever that you are doing today. It's because you will be in charge, and therefore, you might decide to change certain things. The vice president is carrying with the vision of the president. The president's vision is what, or his mandate, is what the vice president is helping to carry. And now he is giving his own vision. And his vision might not necessarily conform with that of the president. And I, I am even shocked that when the vice president is giving his vision, some people are saying that then it means that uh, 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 you, you like, like what is even uh, before us. That, oh, then, then, then it, it, it means that you are, you are running away from the, the, the problems of this government. He's not running away from the problem. When he started, he gave all the achievements of this government, where we took from John Draman Mahama the improvement that we brought in as a government, and where after COVID-19, that devastated the whole world, not only Ghana. Ghana is not an exception. There is no government in history, in Ghana, or in, 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 in the world, that has not felt the, the economic devastation of COVID-19. No country. And IMF itself has come out to say that almost the, they have helped almost the whole world. And half of the world is with them, is with the IMF for, for support. That's what the IMF is saying. Half of the world is, is with the IMF for support. So Ghana is not an ex exception. So but, but, but Mia outlined his vision. And it's not even just the manifesto. And just imagine somebody who is in power and a very busy person. He's able to outline vi 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 his vision. And if you look at those things, the, 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 the 70 point uh, uh, vision that he's espoused, it, 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 it's, so, it's so innovative. It's, it, it, it tells you that this is somebody who thinks outside, outside the box. And, and if you just oppose that one with the opposition, that has less to think about and what they are doing. Go around saying that, oh, I will bring back Okada. Oh, uh, when I come, I will give, I will give Akoko to, to, to you. When he, when he give, when he, when he, <laughs> when he lay eggs, then you sell the eggs. If the, uh, if the, if the eggs finish, then you, you sell them. I mean, can you imagine such mundane promises? completely within the box. And, 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 and Baumia comes to say that for me, there, there are traditional things that we have been doing over the years. And with, the, with, the, with, with hindsight, uh, and given the opportunity, I will ensure that, for instance, the number of ministers, because, it, you see, for, because of team players, because of... Uh, cohesion in government or whatever. If Baumia even has his misgiving about the number of ministers that we currently have or that we used to have, he might say it, he might tell his president, and then the president might say, oh, no, I think this way, and therefore uh, 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 the, the, the final decision 
you know, rest in me. And for that matter, I will go with my vision. If there is a failure, they won't come and say Baumia government. They will say Nanado government and all those things. So there's, there was a good reason why Nanado Danko Akufado also decided that he will, he, will, he will have a relatively large number of ministers and all those things. But Baumia says, in reading and, and taking into consideration the experience he has gained working with Nanado, he says that for him, 50 ministers and deputies will be okay for his government. And I heard your mama also say that he, he is also going for, for 60. So that is, that is number one. This, this is a, 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 a candidate that says that in terms of taxation, he's going to make it a, a, a flat rate for everybody because of the cumbersome, cumbersome nature of the current situation where even people evade tax here and there. Yeah, because, of, because of the cumbersome nature of it and all that. And we all know that apart from all, all things, one reason is about the, tech, the, the, the tax net. The, we, as a nation, have allowed only few people to pay tax. And therefore, Baumia is talking about ensuring that we broaden the tax net. He has talked 70 different visions, 70, 70. And, and for me, if, I mean, I don't want to uh, bore anybody, but if, if maybe, uh, if, if, if maybe you permit me, I can go through them. But the most important thing is that uh, as a nation, as a nation, we need the likes of Baumia. We need somebody who has shown that he has been in office, he has learned from the office. For instance, with his digitalization drive, with his knowledge as an economist. For instance, people say that, oh, uh, for him to say that he's removing e-levies, the emission taxes and all those things, it means that the Nanado Danko Akufado government did not think through it and all those things. Do you remember the, 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 the Okada, Okada Act? The act that outlawed Okada was was promulgated under John Dramani Mahama, but now he's saying that he's also, he's also removing it. So, and do you remember your mama talking about 24 hours? He saying that is not a policy. When he said 24 hours, it's not a policy. It is a consequence of a policy, because I mean the duration, the duration that we use to work, like. For instance, you remember when there were a lot of fire, when there was a lot of uh, 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 burnings in our markets? John Draman Mahama went abroad and brought some United States people to come and study the situation and give advice. When they came, they analyzed and then they said that it was uh, 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 icing and therefore uh, they, they professed certain solutions and all that. Do you know what your mama did? He said that by 6 o'clock, if you are Okaishi or Makwale, they should lock the, 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 the market. So somebody who is now professing 24 hours eh, was, was the one who, 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 who professed that 6 o'clock, if you are in the Makwala market or anywhere near there, you should lock Abubuloshi market. They should lock the market and all that. And they have been locking the market since then. But he said, he said that he has changed his mind. If you look at the, the thought through policy that Baumia brought, and just suppose it with uh, the mundane, the, 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 the not too serious policies, like when I come, I will, I will, I will abolish uh, Lancenza exams, when indeed it was promulgated during your time. You see? And, and, and if this is not hypocrisy, you cannot come and tell us. When, when John Daman and Mahama took over from uh, Professor Mills, did he continue with all the visions of Professor Mills? Yeah, he had his own vision. And, 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 and he, 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 he took through. He, he had to go through his own vision. And I'm saying that whoever, no matter who you are, if you are deputizing for somebody, unless maybe it is an, it's a, it's a, it's a constitutional imperative that says that this is what you should do. 
And if you look at Baumia and the work that his boss, the president, gave him, he ensured that he live up to that work and achieve results in the digitalization drive. And that ensured that corruption has been has been nipped, not not just not just have been reduced mean, uh, 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 to, to, to significantly. And we are not saying that maybe corruption has completely gone, but at least what he did has significantly, you know, uh, reduced corruption because now there is no interface in most cases if you go to the port, if you go to other places, the passport office and all those things. He mentioned all these things. And I think that uh, uh, we need a leader of such visionary character, not just uh, somebody who will just look at the people and say, okay, what can I say so that I will get vote? Then I'll say, that, oh, when I come, uh, I, will, I, will, I will ensure that Okada flourish and all those things. I think that Baumia, at this propitious moment of our history, is the kind of person that Ghana needs. Very well, thank you very much. Uh, Saka Salia has explained to us why he thinks Dr. Baumia is the surest bet for Ghana. Comrade Benamona, let's come to you. I listened to the vice president and the presidential candidate of the new patriotic party. Alhaji Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, when he delivered his maiden speech, I'm not sure it was a lecture. It was the vision of a potential president that he delivered. In that delivery, I got three takeaways. A man who is desperate, a man who will betray his boss, a man who was chameleonic in nature. By being chameleonic, this is a vice president who President Akufado was made to believe is an economic wizard and that he contained, in fact, one of the president's statements, he said that Baumia, a we are senior senior ekitano. Or see, or the 43 achievements. Ediaba and brought a paper. That is the chameleonic nature that the vice president made Akufado to believe that as far as the economic problems of this country are concerned, he more than anybody could be the panacea. You are appointed a vice president on the belief that you will fix whatever economic challenges or mess that was left for you. You come and the economy has run amok. And Elijah Kipo Bakari put it in a more succinct way. He said, you've been appointed head of economics department. Then your students are failing. You somersault and say that you've been able to procure computers. So your students, even though they are failing economics, they are doing well in computers. Are you the head of ICT? Are you the head of ICT? And so the vice president checks his responsibility and the reason for which he was made a vice president. The economy is vanquished. And then you turn out you are talking about the digitalization. Kwame, digitalization. The vice president created this phone. The phones, the vice president created them. Computers, the vice president created them. The softwares, the device president created them. The internet, the device president created them. So you are only a beneficiary. You are only a beneficiary of products. Because there is no place where the vice president has created any phone, any gadget. So where is this? Digitalization prowess from. Need I remind you 
that not long ago, Edward Kojo Salia was Minister for Transport and Communication. It was under his watch as Minister for Transport and Communication that we started the liberalization of the telecom sector. That was the time that people like Tony Yabua will tell you, pick, it used to be like cassava stick. They would be there and say, me jina bointing and I make a say, Mobitel. You remember Mobitel? Mm. Now it is what? Etel Tigo. <coughs> that was the time. The vice president was the one who brought it. You see, I mentioned what? Edward Kojo Sali. I didn't mention Atta Mills, who was vice president, or the president, jo uh, Jerry John Rollins. I didn't. We are talking about ministers. This is in the bosom of ministers. Then, of course, John Mahama, as deputy to Spio Gabra, it was under their watch that MT and then Space Phone came into the, the scene. Then from Space Phone, it went to Space Phone, Ariba to Ariba, now MTN. Then one touch came. And one touch came from Ghana Telecom. Those days, to obtain a one touch SIM, you needed to go and register. You understand? You have to register for a month or so. Then the card will be delivered. That one, you even have to get protocol yeah, for it. Expensive. Yes. I bought, I bought my SIM that I still use as a student discount of 360,000. Yeah. That is today 36 Ghana cities. Mm. My uncle bought it for 1 million. Do you understand what we're talking about here? SIM card. Mm. That is how much we used to buy it. It tells you that the same was everything. Today, the same is given to people for free. The data and the voice is the most important thing. The vice president did not bring these changes. When I was working for Internal Revenue that Saka is very much aware of, we were using manual typewriter, A, B, B, B. Then we moved to the electronic typewriters. Then we moved to the computer desktop where you used to have floppy disks and what have you today things have moved not by the powers of the vice president because technology is changing why is the vice president behaving like the way we say it do you understand what i mean somebody has gone to shit his fat uh, physics then you go and sit by it and say you are the one who has done it why is the vice president behaving that way? Look, in 2006, when I was in Kenya, living in Kenya, Impesa was in operation. They were already transferring money. This issue of mobile money transfers and what have you started from Kenya, from students. They were already doing it. Why is the vice president doing as if it is something monumental that he has done? Do you remember Harun Edrisu when he was doing the mobile money interoperability? Do you remember the fiber optics that Haruna Idrisu laid? Do you remember Omanimbo Aman and then the, 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 the centers that they established? All these things, we are talking about ministers' jobs. <laughs> that was Vice President Bamiya. So Oslo also has done no work. Everything that has been done, the Vice President takes over and says that I am the one who has done this. Really? Really, how mediocre can you be in these things? Now, the best president come to say that I am the most achieved vice president. I am the most achieved vice president. In what capacity? President Akufado is not the most achieved president. And you are the most achieved vice president. What it means is that you are picking above your boss. That is what I talk about, the betrayal. You look at the things that the vice president said. He took what was positive and credited it to himself. Akufado did say. Then he realized that there is a lacuna. He says, no, I stay away from it. Now, the vice president spoke about GDP growth rate. And I am a development economist. And all the time I talk about this that any time you are talking about economic growth, that economic growth must be measured with the development in town. Not the impoverishment or the poverty that that growth 
has yielded. But all the economic growth that we have talked has yielded poverty amongst our people, not development amongst our people. So it means that we don't own the commanding heights, the sectors of the economy. Kwame, it is in this studio that I made the point, and let me reiterate, that if you take the telecom sector alone, all the service providers, none of them is owned by Ghana. Airtel Tigo, Glow, MTN, and Vodafone, none. No, but Ghana has shares. Yeah, we have shares, but we don't have the majority shares. We have, we have, we have, we have, uh, we have uh, 30%. 70, 30. That's what I'm saying. No, we don't have the majority yeah, so, so shares. Do you own it? You don't own it. Sorry, I'm talking about ownership, own commanding height. You don't own it. You don't own it. I'm having 30% shares, guy. You don't, you're not even a majority shareholder. You are not near. So, you see, clearly, so when MTN, today is Friday, go to the airport, you see a plane branded yeah. MTN. Yellow. What is it coming to, to, to take? It's coming to collect dollars to fly the money. The money has been calculated as part of Ghana's GDP. Vodafone will come and collect the S. Glow will come and take the S. So when you calculate that GDP now, the next moment that GDP is taken by its true owners and it's gone. You are left with nothing. How could any real economist, mindful of development, be using GDP as an indicator of the health of your nation's economy when you do not control that GDP? And for instance, he said that the GDP growth that he was talking about from 2017 to, you can go to paragraph 17 or 16, 17 of the vice president's speech, that that GDP was propelled by the GDP growth in agriculture. Kwame, agriculture has grown so much that there is abundance of food and Kenge price has run into the roof from one city to five city. It tells clearly that the, that GDP, the productivity, the agricultural productivity in your country, you don't own it. Do I take you to a location? Just go through a Jurat route, the Mampon Road. And you see large tracts of land, farms. They are owned by the Indians. They are owned by the Chinese. They are producing, they are processing, and they are taking the things they have processed away. Do you understand? Yes, you will factor that as part of your agricultural growth. When you finish, you realize that Charlie, food no day tabletop. <laughs> so food no day tabletop. How could any real economist, a development real oriented economist, be talking about something that you know does not impact on development but impacts on poverty? So anytime our GDP is growing, we see that our people are getting poorer and poorer. How come the GDP is growing and unemployment is on the high? Because the economy is supposed to be booming and therefore there should be more jobs. You get, you get what I mean? Take the vice president and correlate what I'm saying with the speech he, the speech he made. It doesn't sink at all, at all, at all, at all. Now the vice president comes to say, look, we need to have a new approach to sports and sports development. I agree. In the end, the vice president said that he's going to establish a national sports secretariat. You, you believe, believe in duplicity of functions and uh, institutions. We have already have a national sports authority. Do you understand? You already have a national sports authority. If it is not functioning for purpose, you tool it to function for purpose. If you are going to bring a National Sports Authority or Secretariat, what about the National Sports Authority that is backed by law? So you are going to create another parallel structure and it's not going to yield any benefit. Look, we need to have a holistic look at some of these things. Now, I come to a very exciting part of the Vice President's speech. The Vice President instead of admitting that, look, as the one who is the most achieved vice president, I failed you. 
I failed you because I imposed taxes by using English language. But the same thing. Kwame, check your petroleum price build up now. You know the taxes that are on it. We have one of the taxes, sanitation and pollution tax. What do you understand by pollution? When you are going to buy fuel, as soon as you are buying the fuel, you already pay for pollution of the air. Because when you take the fuel, in consuming the fuel, there will be the exhaust. Not so, you emit. So you have already paid for what they are now introducing as emission tax. I mean, you, you get it? Okay. The vice president is part of the people that formulated the pollution tax, and today is part of the people that formulated the emission tax. One particular thing, I'm going to buy petrol. When I put the petrol in my motorbike, the motorbike in consuming the fuel will burn. And then there will be, the, what do we call it? Uh, how do the tree call it? In English, in, in, in Wali, Bagari, we call it Mwah. In Wusie. In Wusie. When I'm using my motorbike, the Wusie will come out. Because of that, you have already made me to pay pollution tax. Now, when I'm using it, then you say that because <laughs> I'm using the motorbike and the thing is coming out, pay emission tax. What kind of nation are we? Is it not the same vice president who expanded the president pronouncement that we are going to move away from taxation to production. So pollution tax and emission tax is production. It's, it's, it's production. So admit that you have been part of formulating wrong economic policies and that on hand side you want to remove them. But why do you want to remove them when we vote for you to become president? And why didn't, don't you tell your president? Because you are the most achieved vice president according to your, 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 your standard. Why don't you get it removed now? Because President Akufado have achieved nothing. Everything done under this government is you. So therefore, you have the capacity to ameliorate our worsening condition now. Why do you want that in 2025? We should suffer it now in 2025 you come and remove it. Why? Then the almighty electronic levy. Can you end on it for me? No, I will end on free SHS. Okay. The almighty electronic levy. What did they say? When we said that, ah, Mr. Vice President, prior to this, you had spoken about taxes on Momo. But they are bringing a tax on Momo. You have been quiet. Kojo upon Kuruma came and told us that the vice president drafted the e-levy bill and that it was under his instrumentality that the 100 city threshold was introduced so that poor people will not suffer it. Then John Guedu, who was then general secretary of the new patriotic party, comes out to say that he can tell us on authority that the vice president was fully involved in the formulation of electronic transfer levies. If you have seen that the thing is wrong and it's impacting negatively on the, on the people, scrap it now. Why do you want to scrap it when we vote for you in 2024? Uh, 2024? Why? He, he doesn't have the power to scrap it. Oh, but he has the power to formulate it. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you heard the video that was going around. You heard the video that was going around. Yeah, he's interjecting he it. He has, he, has, he has the power to formulate. He has the power to write the bill. He formulated he never formulated Why? Kodi Opong Kuruma said he never said. Let's have order, please. Yeah, um, he never formulated um, it. Go on. Bahi yala na irana. I say he never formulated it. Yeah, are you he go, was against you, it. You, you, you go Didn't to cabinet. Didn't you see the video that you he was against it? You go to cabinet. Didn't you see the video that he, he was against it? You attend cabinet. Yeah. And cabinet decisions is what you never formulated. You have never attended cabinet. People who have attended cabinet say that is the vice president who is the brainchild of Ilevi. Then you are sitting here saying you have not And besides, you have been there. It is please, ruined. please stop. Okay, let's let's make it. Uh, yeah. So this is what you are saying. Double standards. Finally, when free SHS was touted as a Dakufado policy, which I said that I attended school free, so it couldn't have been Akufado. The Constitution, Article 25, ABC, is evident that 
free SHS is captured. If you go to Article 38 of the Constitution, the directive principle of state policy, since you are a lawyer in making, it tells you what it is about. Akufado comes to take our constitutional provision and says that he is the one bringing it. Granted, he is the one bringing it. When he started, we said that this thing is fraught with challenges. We need to review it. You said, no, 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 no. Review means cancellation. Did you hear what the vice president? He is going to improve upon it. You, you understand English. <laughs> if you don't review, can you improve? You can't improve. If you don't review, can you improve? Where is this? Review, review is that bad thing. Where is this chicanery coming from? No, where is this chicanery coming from? Can I? Where is this chicanery from? Really? I just don't get it. You review to know the status of it. You don't because know. you just don't get up and say, I'm going to improve something when you have not identified what the challenges are. Mm. So you have to do a review, understand what the real challenges are, then you can move forward to say that on the basis of A, B, C, D, this is how it should go so that there will be improvement. Bernard, thank you. Honorable Yeah, Yeah. See, see, when a, a liar kisses you, you must be in a hurry to count your teeth. That's for an embrace from a liar. Not only should you be fast to extricate yourself, you need to go and bath and purify yourself. That is what Baunya has meant for us today. Kwame. And so I've been surprised that many people are accusing Dr. Baunya of lying. Kwame, a born liar. How do you accuse? In fact, to accuse a liar of lying is like accusing a dog of barking. It comes naturally. So those who don't know, I am telling you without any art of that. And that's why I said it simply that, Kwame, if even Dr. Baunya miss you and he greets you good morning, look at the position of the sun before you respond. Even the weather can lie against the weather. Not to talk about even mundane things. Kwame, before I go into the real issues, I just wanted to correct some things uh, Saka has said. And some of them, they have, have lived their willfulness. Just see the same old, tired, loose talk of saying that which country in the world has not experienced things from COVID and the... No, we have six minutes. Oh, Kwame, you can't give yeah, me six minutes. Kwame, you give them in, in, in double digits. One, one minute. Kwame, you give them a double digit, and they are going to give me six minutes. Okay, go on. Kwame, I know we are going to be unfair yeah, to me. Okay, ten. You see, so, Kwame. It's actually ten. I, I deliberately say six so that he will he give me six minutes. You see that the, the, even yeah. neighboring here, Côte d'Ivoire, are this. Well, they are not affected by it COVID. It affected them. Kwame, they are putting single digit inflation. Yeah, from one All of them. From my brother, let's seven. Don't hurt me. Yes. Kwame. From one Kwame. to seven. Kwame. 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 Let's not do this. Deliberately. Yes. To to us, what, what I'm saying. You are so quiet. Where you? They even went to. Let me ask you. Did, did, did I open your mouth? Okay, you do not. Shut up. I hear you. Kwame, <laughs> they are operating single digit inflation. They are operating under uh, uh, single dig digit deficits. Why? Kwame, why? Their economies are under growth. Well, the, the West economic growth we experience under the MPP zero point four. They will grow two three percent. So it comes down. To the quality of your economic management. And so, Kwame, I think that those things are, are, are just uh, uh, mundane things that don't, okay, don't talk now about. Now, Kwame, let me come to the substantive <laughs> issues. Kwame, about the, this one, I want to appeal to Ghanaians. Kwame, uh, and Ghanaians who are listening to me must listen with rapt attention. We are in a very serious business of choosing a leader who will stir the affairs of this country from the hopelessly incompetent management under the MPP, government of Nana Kufado and Dr. Baunya, to one that will rescue the people of this country and wipe away their tears. So one of the most important elements that we must look for in the leader, Kwame, is trust. You must be able to trust the leader that we are going to choose on the, 20, on, on the 7th of December 2024. Because without trust, that leader is just going to ride on our backs to power and sink us into deeper truths of misery and poverty. Kwame, it has already become abundantly clear 
that Dr. Mahmoud Baunia. And you can go and Google about him and see what will come up. The, the accomplished lies that he has told Kwame has given him a huge credibility deficit. Nobody can trust his word. And in fact, before he even started this talk, many people said, oh, this man, what is, well, yeah, he's going to say the same plethora of lies that he unleashed in the run-up to 2016. So even before he started speaking, people did not even believe him. And when he spoke, yes, ah, he did it there. When you see a snake lying before you, you don't hire a consultant, you kill it. So the people saw in him clearly that he's not a trustworthy, honest, credible person. So, Kwame, the trust is not there. Then Kwame, come and look at even loyalty to his own government. He has thrown Nana Kufado under the bus. The bus will run over him like nobody's business. He will disfigure him. Kwame, you see that he is running away from the economic mess. The catastrophic mismanagement of the economy. He is running away. Nana Kufuado said in the run-up to the 2012-20 CC election that he was bringing Dr. Baunya because of his economic acumen. He had a magic wand to wave away our economic problems. And so as vice president, he was going to take charge of the economic management team. Kwame, I'm sure you can remember. When he came, he was saying, Jan Bafo, Osa Fumafo, uh, 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 including himself what a mighty competent economic management team you remember that remember. to take charge of the economy that is the most demonstrable fact that today he's seeking to parade himself as an aplanke that he had no role he's a aplanke driver mate Nana Kufado didn't give him any serious role to play and that he was sad light is that what you said? And that, yes, he did go and say that he yeah, treated how, him as a bit. How did he achieve that, the terms that, that, that The advice that he gave, you yourself, you just even said it here. That some of the advice that they, they, they gave, they were not about to take it. That's what he said here. But he was given that uh, uh, mantle. That's what I'm saying, that the disloyalty he's demonstrating to Nana Kufatu today, it shows clearly that he would treat Ghanaians even worse. Because one of the things I thought he would have done, with this opportunity to address the nation, we have been first, Kwame, to show the most. <laughs> Two, to show deep regret, and perhaps even uh, uh, some typical politicians of his ilk, to share some few tears. That this is a sad moment for me, coming back to you. I've, I've After promising you I've that I was going to transform your lives to the better, I couldn't do it. I'm very sorry, and wipe away, a few, and wipe away a few tears. Kwame, and, and, and render an unqualified apology to guardians for running the country to such sorry deaths of misery, subjecting the lives of the people to unprecedented suffering and hardship. Kwame, this is the first thing he should have done. So for me, the fact that he had the uh, uh, FOM tree to even come and say, uh, give us more promises. Kwame, you are holding power. When you hold power, you don't make promises. You act. For the past eight years, Dr. Mahmoud Bawiyan, Nana Kufadu, and others have been holding power. They have no right. It's an insult to Ghanaians for them to be holding power and coming to us, giving us promises. Kwame, if you are in opposition and you are making promises, it's different. Because you don't hold power. Okay, Kwame. You don't hold power and make promises while you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are still holding the mantle of office. Promises are in the realm of opposition because they don't have the power to do uh, uh, those things that they are talking about. Okay? So, Kwame, this, there is absolutely no excuse for uh, 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 Dr. Mahmoud Bawinya to come and tell us today that when, One minute. when, when he comes, he's going to abolish Tax. Momo tax, <laughs> emission tax. tax. Kwame, it's hope wash. It's hope wash. You are holding the power. You, in fact, like uh, Bernard said, uh, uh, my colleague Kujo Kuma indicated clearly. He was instrumental in the crafting of the Momo tax. And then he comes and tells us that 
Anybody who wants to tax Momo is anti four, anti four people. So by extension, you are telling us that even you yourself, you are anti people. Because you were instrumental, instrumental in the crafting of the Momo tax. And Kwame, I hear this thing and I, I get amazed that he made certain suggestions like policy and others that they were not taking. Kwame, any principled person on the face of this F, having to have even prime ministers and others resigning on point of differences on policy and principle, when you make it and your leader does not take it, you resign. So that tomorrow, everybody will bear eloquent testimony to the fact that when you said this is the way to go and they said that's not the way i said fine i will depart so that today if dr Mahmoud, Mahmoud Bavia had come and told us that i didn't want momo the president of the first momo and so today I, I i i i i disagreed with him and then i resigned today if he had come to say that when he comes you abolish momo many people will have taken him serious yeah. but you sit tight and do all the pranks of government even participate in even uh, uh, bringing up dubious uh, Japa deals and others which robbed us of million billions of Ghana cities and this uh, Japa it was the vice president's old creation transferring it from a bank guarantee to insurance guarantee and then from condition president to condition subsequent corrupt acts by the vice president so coming you see that in all phases of this that we are talking about basically Dr. Bowia has full responsibility. Kwame, why do people even en enunciate the doctrine of collective responsibility? That if you are part of the system and the system goes wrong or something happens to you, all of you inside who participated in the policy are collectively responsible. Uh, they said it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a parliamentary system of governance that, no. that you use. That no. When you, when, you, when you read it, it's Kwame, actually, it's Kwame, actually Kwame, something that Let me tell you why I, I disagree with that. The, the, well, yes, this morning actually I did a little research. Yes, on it. yeah, I know what you are saying. Different facets of it. I, yes, I know, I know the parliamentary system where the yeah, prime minister as yeah, head of government. Yes, so yes, but Kwame, even in the presidential system where the president uh, is a sole uh, uh, executive mm. and he said to hire all other people to, if he gives you a responsibility, a schedule to tackle, and 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 and, and that fails you are as responsible as the president. It's only that ultimate responsibility comes back to the president. Mm -hmm. But as a participant in that exercise, mm -hmm. you are collectively responsible. So it's just that if you want to find an individual at the end of the day to single out and lay all the decisions on him. Yes, ultimately, it's the president. So you're not looking at the political definition of it. You're looking at the legal definition yeah, of it. The the point, I'm saying that yeah. I'm just looking at this common sense. Common sense, car, yes. Common sense that, that also. Well, well, you if I made you, a, if, 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 I, if I, if I made you a manager of my company, yeah. Okay. Mm. And you succeed, will you take credit? Will I give you credit for it or not? You will. If I made you the manager and you fail, are you partly responsible or you are not? I am. Yes. So there is some responsibility. Mm. You cannot run away from that responsibility. No, no, no. Mm. Kwame. So absolutely, I. That's why I said from the. I've said I'm an issue. That the issue of credibility for us matters is at the center of this election that we are going to. Somebody who has died in the market, Kwame. We don't need to announce his demise. Well, thank you it's very, very much. clear mm. to us that Ghanaians know who. Dr. Bamiya is. Thank you. When he speaks. Thank you. Ghanaians know who President Mahama is when he speaks. Thank you. And so there is no iota of doubt. Thank you. That in this particular race that we are going, thank you. Credibility and trust mm. is at the center of the decision Ghanaians will make. Bero. And thank when you. it comes Bero. to that, Bero. Bero. there are no qualms about Bero. it. Thank you. Dispensing justice in uh, society will be launched on the 22nd of February at the High Court Complex Auditorium at exactly 2 p.m. I'll be moderating the lunch, um, and definitely I want all of you to be there. It's 10 o'clock. It means the next show is up. Thank you, sir. My you are not the be fed. Kwame, you are not the fed to me. No, no, no. I'm not all of them are speaking the list. No, it's true. It's for 10 minutes. No, Kwame. They spoke more than 15 people. No, I'm telling you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Kwame, but I'm not asking that. No, hold on. I have so many things. But I'm going to ask you at 9 for 10. Finish at 9 for 10. Kwame, Kwame, Kwame. I have so many respects. No, no, no. The victory no, no, no. of lies, Dr. Bamba. No, no. no, no. I will give out one minute. Sorry, I'll yeah. see you guys on Monday. Sorry, I just wanted you to see some of the things that this man said.